Okay, so let's uh, start off. Um, I want to import a part. I want to change a construction plane, and I also want to make a solid that would be representative of the stock that we're going to cut this part out of. So that's what we're going to get done in this video. First things first, I'm going to hit F9. F9 lets me see the uh, crosshairs for the coordinate system. This is really helpful for keeping your bearings on not only this brown one, which is the WCS, but also the light blue ones, which I'll, you, we'll see later. will show us our coordinate system for um, for our milling operations. You can see down here we've got a WCS. This is our construction and this is our tooling coordinate systems. Um, I always uh, change my construction and tooling planes together so these two always match and then this guy often does not match. Um, okay, so first things first, we got the F9 to turn, remember F9 here turns on the the, the crosshairs and then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to 3D mode. When we're doing lines and that sort of stuff, in 2D mode it's going to project onto a Z height of this, this height. I'm going to do a bounding box. That's a 3D shape. I don't want to be stuck in 2D mode. Going back before, back and forth between 2D and 3D is super easy, but and you're going to have to do it a fair amount because when you're drawing, uh, selecting things in 3D, you're going to want to be in 3D mode, but sometimes it's really convenient to just flip it back to 2D so you can grab something that's a 3D feature but projects down and you don't have to do any fancy projections to do it. So 3D, here we go. I'm going to file. This is going to import the, the, the SolidWorks part. So file, file merge pattern, and I'm going to select the front drive flange. There it is. I'll shift it around, shade it so we can see it. And this is going to be the direction that I'm going to mill. So this is uh, where the cutter will come in from the top. Um, I can select a new location, scale, rotate mirror, all sorts of stuff. Um, I'm going to just say OK because I'm going to leave it at the natural coordinates, the natural natural WCS from the CAD part. I'm not going to adjust the WCS um, at any time. I'm going to only change my my construction and tooling planes. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to right uh, construction and tooling planes. It says WCS here, and I would think that it changes the WCS, but it doesn't. It changes the construction and tooling planes, which we'll see in just a minute. So right, I can see X and Y are appropriate for me to do some construction geometry. But if I go over here and click on WCS, go to View Manager, you're going to go to View Manager a lot. You can see from this icon, our WCS is at top. So I've, I hit that button that said right WCS, but the WCS stays at top. But in fact, the construction and tooling planes change to the right side. So just be aware, of, this guy up here changes the construction and tooling planes, which is what you probably want anyway. It's good. So I'm going to say OK. And then I am going to uh, zoom in a little bit. I'm going to make a new level because I'm going to do some construction for our coordinate systems and stock. So, coordinate construction. So now I've got myself a new plane, or um, a new level. And I am going to draw myself, where are you there? From the center to the side. Oops, that's not what I want to do. That that's uh, that would be working to put my coordinate system here, which is not what I want to do. Um, so I'm gonna just gonna erase that. Just uh, Control Z it. Uh, what I'm gonna do now is create a bounding box, and this bounding box, as I rotate around, you'll see fits. Actually, it's this is left over from me trying this before. I'm gonna. This is cheating. That was going to be the perfect stock that we wanted, but I want to show you how to do it. Let's see. Okay, so now this bounding box fits exactly around this part. Um, I'm going to say OK, and I'm going to use this as an intermediate thing to calculate the real bounding box. So I'm going to, and this is just going to be one way that you can make a, a bounding box of a particular size. So I'm going to do distance across the corners. So right now I'm working at making the stock, the, uh, a realistic stock size that we're going to cut this thing out of. 
And we can see here, we got all this information about coordinates and angles and all this sort of stuff. All I care about right here, 9.25 by 9.25 by 3.284 inches is the bounding box that this part lives in. So I'm gonna say, okay, I wrote that down. And then um, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna proceed to make a bigger bounding box. So I'm gonna create another bounding box. And so this is going to be four inches thick, which is a little thicker than 3.284 minus 3.284. Oops, I got a comma in there. 0.284 divided by two. What that's doing is it's saying, I want a piece that's four inches thick Subtract out how thick this bounding box is already, which is 3.284, and then I'm going to divide by 2 because it's going to expand equally on both sides. Okay, 0.358 either way, and you can see it's, oops, just a little bit bigger. Now on X, on uh, Y, and Z, I'm going to do a similar sort of thing, so I'm going to want it 10 inches big, so I'm going to go 10 minus 9.25 divided by 2. So it's 9.25. 25 on the original bounding box I want it to be 10 divided by 2 for both directions and so if I go to the go here oops maybe this isn't rotated properly that's really strange it's um Oh, I think I've got this wrong. X and Y, I see. So, okay, so I want this guy up here. I was not paying enough attention to my X and Ys. So it looks like this thing remembers from past files. So, okay, so Z, you can see the Z fits pretty closely. Come on, there you go. But if I go up on top, you can see that my blue bounding box is bigger. The dotted line is it is remembering from a past file, which is really not very good for teaching, but oh well. And then Z is, uh, is going to be 4 minus 3.284 divided by 2, and we should be good to go. I'm going to say OK. And two, and so let's take a look at it. It's a little bit bigger in height, and it's also a little bit bigger on uh, X and Y. So let's check our work here. Let's make, especially after all those uh, mess ups there, let's make sure our work is right. So I'm going to do a distance from corner to corner. Let's uh, analyze distance, and you can see we our bounding box is 10 by 10 by 4. So that's good. And even though I messed uh, up a couple details in the middle, we got 10 by 10 by 4, which tells us that the end result is right. Okay, so now we got a bounding box. This is going to be the, the size of the stock that we're going to want to cut out. But it's not a solid yet, and a solid is a very convenient thing to select for um, your stock. don't absolutely have to be a solid, but um, if we were to, let's say, import a solid model of our vice, it would be very convenient to be able to have those two solids merged together. Um, so uh, I'm going to make a solid. We can you can decide not to make a solid if you're so inclined. So we're still on the coordinate construction level here. I'm going to select create rectangle on the bottom, and then so that's that's fine. And then I'm going to proceed to to extrude it up. So chain I'm going to do. Here's a, here's a good thing to get used to is the chaining. So 3D, if I select this line, it doesn't know if it wants to go this way or up here. It's ambiguous because there's lots of different paths to go around to make a chain. So I'm going to say C plane, which is the construction plane. You can see here it stays in the X and Y. If I select this line, it'll go all the way around because I'm in the C plane. 3D, it doesn't know which way. So I'll do that. Now, of course, it didn't do that because I think I have more than one line on top of it. So I'll just select my way around. Okay, so you can see the green and the red arrows are at the same place, which tells you you made a full chain all the way around. So I'll say I click OK. And the extrude height, it's left over from me trying this before. Four inches is the right height, but 
Um, typing in the right things is uh, fraught with peril, so you can always type things in wrong. So I'm going to select points. So I write, instead of editing this by hand with some number, I'm going to right click, distance between two points, and then I'm going to pick, I could pick these two points, but they're kind of in the middle of a bunch of geometry. I'm going to pick these two clean points over here that are far away from anything. Bottom line, top line. Oh, and while you're at it, this guy is always giving you instructions. If you right click on it and do large font, it's a good thing because uh, when you're not sure what to do, this thing is often telling you what to do. And then if it's way out over here in Never Neverland, move it somewhere where it's really obvious. Otherwise, you will never see it, even though it's there. Uh, you can see here that now we're back to four inches because the length of this line here was four inches. So I'm going to say, okay, there's our solid. That's all it's going to be, uh, represent the stock that we're going to work with. And I'm going to cut, you know, I'll keep going with this video. Okay, so now I've got the solid. Um, next thing I'm going to do is I want to make a coordinate system. And I'm going to pick off this corner here because let's say that this is the stationary jaw of your vise. Um, real simple, line, pick off that corner. And you can see it's it's got the perpendicular symbol, which is telling me that I'm probably going the right direction. And I'm going to do a second line. Click. Now, that's way out in left field, and that's not what I want, but as long as I see that perpendicular sign, I'm good. And for this geometry that I'm making, this is going to be for our coordinate system, so it doesn't matter if they're long or short. Um, so these, these lines are perfectly uh, sufficient. I'm going to say OK. And then to finish getting a coordinate system, I'm going to click here, WCS, View Manager. You're going to go into View Manager a lot. I'm going to do geometry to create a new new coordinate system using geometry on the part. And then it's going to want it's going to say set construction plane by geometry, C plane by geometry, and I don't that honestly doesn't tell me a whole lot, but I do know from experience that what I'm doing is I want to grab the X line here, which it didn't show very well, but I grabbed the X line. And then the Y line here, it's, you can see it's highlighting first x then y and every time you will get the you will get the coordinate systems you want so you can see x y z if you grab say the negative x or the negative y they can be all messed up but you can just rotate through these combinations and it will give you some uh, different combinations of um, coordinate system directions uh, because i got it right the first time the first combination is what I wanted, but maybe you wanted X on this direction or you want a Y in that direction. Um, a lot of those, a lot of times just by scrolling through these different options, you can get that. So I'm going to say OK. Last thing I have to do is I have to give it a name, so I'm going to call it Mill Top because this is going to be the top uh, direction of the part for manufacturing purposes. And um, I'm milling it. You can name it whatever you want. Um, so the last thing I'm going to do you can see top stole WCS. It's always WCS when I'm doing stuff. And I'm going to click here and here to change the construction and the tooling planes to be on the mill top coordinates um, uh, coordinate system. So I'm going to say OK. And you can see here, real important, just sanity check. Get the blue, um, get the, the blue crosshairs here to tell me that I actually have um, my coordinate system in this, this side. I can see up here the construction uh, coordinate system is in the direction I expect. The tooling is in the direction I expect, which is X, Y, X, Y. And then down here, X is down, Y is this way. That's the WCS, and that's fine. I, I never mess with the WCS, but you can see here X and Y is in the direction that I expect for this part. And if I turn off shading, you can see the, the part is oriented um, appropriately for milling. And then on top of that, I can see where the origin is with this blue line. If you want to turn it on or off, F9 turns, your, turns those uh, crosshairs on and off. So at this point, you've got, if I shade it, you've got a solid for your stock. You've got a new coordinate system that is potentially appropriate for your milling. It's up to you where you want your coordinate system. This isn't the only place you can put it. Um, but this is not an unreasonable place for it. If you're going to probe off your uh, piece of work after you put it in the vise. And um, then, oh, I guess one last thing we can do is uh, just remind you how to go 
back to your original level and turn off this coordinate construction, which is um, it's got construction stuff in there, and it's also got the stock, which um, maybe we could split that out to a different level uh, later. Might have been a cleaner way to do it, but I turn off just turn off visible. You cannot turn off visible when it's selected and it's yellow. See, I'm clicking all day long, and um, nothing happens. Oops, I guess I reordered them, didn't I? Um, you can't when it's selected yellow. You can't turn it off, but if I go and select 10 and turn that off, okay, well, now my part's gone. If I go select that, I have to select yellow to so select yellow on one to turn 10 off because I can't turn 10 off while it's selected yellow, which, which yellow means it's the current level. And let's see, if I select number, I can reorder my 10. I guess it's I was clicking too much. So there you go. Um, that's uh, coordinate systems, importing parts, and making yourself a nice piece of stock.